Hello, I'm Nick Goddard, a professor and porn performer. I left my university, but now Tracy, who is my guide and assistant, has invited me to ex Hamster University for a series of sex lectures. With all my knowledge and experience, I will help you discover all the secrets of porn and sex. So, welcome to my, this series of lectures. Hello everybody, welcome to the third lecture of our series of sex lectures. Uh, my name is Tracy and this is Professor Nick Goddard. And now, Professor Goddard, if you could start um, with the third lecture. Okay, thank you very much Tracy. Thank you. Okay. okay, in this lecture I'm going to give a scientific assessment of the different pills available for men to provide a sustained erection. So, one of the greatest discoveries of the 20th century took place in a small town in the far southeast of England, a place called Sandwich in Kent. And this was the drug Viagra, or Sildenafil, to give it its proper name. And there we have a picture of England, or Great Britain actually, showing where Sandwich is, right on the bottom corner of the country. It was originally discovered by Pfizer scientists Andrew Bell, David Brown and Nicholas Tourette, who were tr working on drugs to treat high blood pressure. And it was noted during clinical trials of one compound that one of the side effects was a long-lasting erection. And the company realized that it was sitting on a gold mine. And in fact, the sales of Viagra made Pfizer the biggest pharmaceutical company in the world. And it works by inhibiting an enzyme, this is cyclic guanosine monophosphate specific phosphodiesterase type 5, or PDE5, that breaks down a molecule that is responsible for maintaining an erection. And here's a picture of the structure of sildenafil or Viagra. As you can see, it's a moderately complicated molecule. And if that molecule, CGMP, is not broken down, the erection keeps going until the drug disappears or you die of exhaustion, one or the other. And since becoming available in 1998, sildenafil has been a common treatment for erectile dysfunction and made Pfizer the biggest pharma company in the world. Sadly, though, the place where Viagra was discovered was sold by Pfizer in 2012, which is a tragedy, really, because it's one of the great places that's been a, a, the greatest good to mankind. And almost as soon as Viagra became available, other companies realized that they could get in on the act and make some money. So other companies developed alternatives to cash in on the huge amounts being spent on it. And the main alternatives are Cialis, or Tadalafil. And this is the structure of Tadalafil. And Levitra, or Vardenafil. And this just differs in, instead of having a methyl group on the end, it has an ethyl group. And this has some interesting um, consequences. So you can see the structure of tadalafil is different to the other two drugs, which is the effect that it's metabolized much more slowly than the other two. The other two, because they only differ between a methyl and ethyl group, they're essentially the same drug. And they, it's broken down in a period of about four to five hours in the body. Whereas Cialis, or tadalafil, makes works much longer the half-life in the body is about 17 hours which is why it's often called the weekend pill because you can take it say on a Saturday night and it will still be going on Sunday morning since the original impetus was to develop drugs for treating high blood pressure it's not surprising that these drugs have some interesting side effects most of which are relatively harmless for example sildenafil side effects include headache flushing, indigestion, nasal congestion, impaired vision, including photophobia and blurred vision. Some sildenafil users also see everything tinted blue. Tadalafil side effects include headache, stomach discomfort or pain, indigestion, burping, acid reflux, back pain, muscle aches, flushing, and stuffy or runny nose. And vardenafil has similar side effects, nausea, abdominal pain, back pain, photosensitivity, etc., etc., etc. One of the nastiest side effects of Vardenafil, which obviously shows there is a slight difference between the drugs, is priapism. This is where you get an erection that won't go away. Uh, so it doesn't go away for at least four hours, and is named after the Greek god Priapus, a fertility god, often represented with a disproportionately large and permanent erection. 
And although that sounds good, it isn't. It's a serious medical condition which can cause all sorts of problems and it needs immediate treatment. And these side effects are all related to the way the drug works because it has the effect of targeting a molecule which is not just specific to the penis. It can have side effects elsewhere in the body. And I've, having tried sildenafil myself, I can verify that certainly headache and blue vision are side effects of the drug. But it also does work in allowing the erection to be maintained for long periods and also to allow an erection to be restored after a short rest period. I haven't tried the other two drugs, so I can't comment on how these work in comparison to sildenafil. And of course, these drugs have also been a boon to the porn business, as male performers can now take a pill if they can't get wood. But since some of the side effects can be serious, for example, heart attack and priapism, it's always best to seek medical advice between, before taking any medication, and that includes drugs for erectile dysfunction. So that would be my strong advice is if you're considering using these drugs, please get yourself checked out first to make sure it isn't going to cause you any serious problems when you do take the drug. That concludes my lecture on pills for men. Thank you very much for listening. So this was the third lecture. I must say that I was really listening really car carefully. And thank you so much. Thank, thank you so much for all the information. Thank you very and much, Tracy. I hope you like it. See you later.